<laughs> What's going on guys? Marco from Aguilera Shop here, live again. For the first time ever, perhaps the last under this set, Switterby joining me here at Taverna Costera. Welcome. Thank you so Thank much you. for having us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Chris, what's going on, guys? People know what's happening. What? what? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we just played a show. It was it was cool. Like, we, we uh, you know, uh, got to play at Taverna Costera, one of our favorite venues, and... Uh, it was it was a good time. There's a lot of people coming out, and there was a uh, all ages show out on the patio down there. It was a blast. Yeah, absolutely, was a blast. Um, so th tell me a little bit about Sweater Beat. How did this project come about? Um, so Sweater Beat was originally um, a solo project that was always intended to be a band. Uh, I've been writing music since I was like able to write, and then not showing anyone, and then I had a near death experience like six or so years ago and freaked out that like if something happened to me no one would have ever known uh anything that i'd written and that really lit a fire so i started like booking shows and attending shows uh met a bunch of friends one of those friends that i met was tony uh and he came to one of my open mics and was like actually I'll be your guitarist. And that kind of like jump started getting it going. I had Steven already on drums and then I was able to have a close friend of mine in the band. And then I met Eric actually at an elevated underground show and he was like, I'll play bass. Uh, <laughs> and it worked out pretty well. T Tierney's being kind of polite. Um, we, we met through Gabby Fisher of Elevated Undergrounds, and Gabby mentioned that Tierney was starting a band, and I just immediately went like, do you need a bassist? And she goes like, I was, I was like, I play bass. She's like, I don't know you. I was like, hi, I'm Eric. I play bass. And mm -hmm. yeah, then she let me join the band. You had a good band. energy. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, awesome. So I love how Gabby brings a lot of people together. Yeah. Friend of the show, friend of the, you know, things I do here. Gentlemen, let's hear from Steven. What's going on, Steve? I don't really know a whole lot about you. Tell us a little uh, bit of... Charlie. Charlie, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm thinking of the other... Steven, My apologies. I left that part out, but Steven, uh, unfortunately, had to uh, part ways with Twitter Beat, and then they've kind of just been filling in, basically, these last few months. Yeah, um, so... I met Charlie through the No Babies. Um, at the time, it was Tony Taylor and uh, the No Babies, and then it was the No Babies, and now it's No Babies. Um, and. Oh, it's always been. Uh, it's always been the No Babies or just No Babies. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I just got the, the part wrong. Love you. Um, but I met Tony through like while while performing and through Indigo Kid, and then because of Tony's shows, I was able to meet Charlie, and he's an absolute sweetheart and a very good drummer. So when I needed someone, I was like, hi, I'm terrified of everyone. Can you please um, do this? And he's been a total homie about it ever since. So, yeah. yeah awesome, awesome. Another thing I wanted to know, tell us a little bit about the Pigeon Head Collective. A lot of cool things happening, including tonight. Awesome show. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, Pigeon Head Collective, it's really... <sighs> I was so terrified when they like first started talking to me because I was part of a collective prior to that that dissolved like horribly. Uh, but then I got to know like Mari and Germs and the different people who were part of it. And they're genuinely just artists in town who want to support other artists in town. Um, whether you're in the collective or not in the collective, they're continuously trying to find people that they can support, people they can like build up. And that made me want to do more with it. So I've been booking events with them and helping out and then eventually joins which means we're a pigeon collective band pigeon hat collective band um but it's it's really cool seeing what they're able to do with the community um i know we have a show in march that hasn't been announced and a show in april that's been hinted at so um yeah get excited for fun things absolutely a lot of fun things one thing i want to know gentlemen uh how would you compare your time with sweater beat with other projects a lot of other musical things that you've been involved with in the past In a in a way, it just feels nice to kind of play a more supporting role than um, over just being like the the heart of everything, you know. At least just my speaking from my my personal experience. Um, yeah, whereas it's it's nice to just let tyranny be that and just kind of really just kind of focus more on just being a being the best guitar player I can and just uh, writing good parts that compliment the music and I think that's something that is 
not not everyone knows how to do is to write in a way that's best for the song rather than some people kind of noodle and just do um all kinds of cool things that feel that feel cool to them in their own context but that but don't doesn't necessarily mesh well with uh the ensemble <laughs> any thoughts uh same you know just kind of being the fill-in guy feels like a little bit less pressure i mean i try to give him my best still but um really really fun music to play and i've really enjoyed it these last few months and i'm sorry that it's over would that be a hell of a show yeah i want to so Sweater beat was um my first time ever playing live with a rock band i mean previously i uh was in marching band <laughs> i played tuba so i also on the bass technically hey. um but i mean you know obviously yeah they're bass clef you read the same type of music yeah, i can appreciate i came from marching band too i can appreciate that world <laughs> i was a trombone player hey. there you go so you know what's Ooh. up um but you know like yeah so in the marching band world you're like in a group of like you know could be 100 people could be like 500 um but either way you know like not being in a smaller tight-knit group um you know like we all really play off each other and you know you see that when we perform live you know we um yeah like we love being in each other's presence and like yeah i want to give a shout out to charlie you know like i mean be, the bassist and the drums really have to be in sync and I've, i you know i feel like we've been doing pretty well and like charlie's just been a magnificent you know part of the band and just like the electricity you feel when you're in front of people and having a good time, you know, everything else just disappears. And so, yeah, just, that's so, really just like great. reiterate, like yeah. I didn't know Eric prior to this, so it was really wild going up on stage um, and finding out what that energy was going to be like. Something really fun with his marching band background is he moves around a whole bunch and he marches his knees are up in the yeah. air um and it gets me dancing it gets me moving and me encouraged because like it's scary <laughs> uh i hadn't performed for a long time and then i only performed for myself like by myself a bunch of times so being up there um as a band and trying to be a production is really scary so just having people who are like up there and it feels like they're supporting you um and it feels like they care about you is really important that's a huge part of it well, sort of be it as we know it, will no longer be what it is. What, what can we see? What are we expecting in, in the future for us for sort of be? Um, so right now, I'm in the like interesting rebuilds phase. Uh, they're both in a different band that needs more attention, and Eric as well is in Scoundrel of the Sage, um, but also is doing all these other projects in town that require a lot of attention. And I'm trying to double down and put a lot more effort into Sweater Beat. So it's just not really um, lining up in that way. So right now it's kind of the hunt for new musicians in one as um, aspect. But also, I have so many songs in the works right now. Uh, like, my notes folder is crazy. So it's really just um, working with other musicians in town and collaborating on those songs to get them finished. So that next time I'm performing as Sweater Beat, you'll, hear, you'll be hearing a few of the ones we do now. But hopefully, like at least uh, that's six or so new ones so i want to be i want to be getting a whole new album going before we even have this one fully out cool a lot of things happening <laughs> gentlemen let's hear a little bit about your other projects other bands you things that are going on yeah so our uh primary act i guess at this point our, our only act uh is nova babies um a bit more of an alternative act we sound kind of like a mixture of the strokes and my chemical romance um and uh yeah we're just getting more aggressive we, we kind of the pandemic like for a lot of people kind of slowed down our momentum and uh now the scene is just a whole different place than it was when we went pre-pandemic and we kind of have to you know start again as a brand new band and because of that we need to just be aggressive with the shows keep generating revenue finish the record that we have in the studio right now um and then get on with uh, some serious touring Charlie? Nova Babies. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Lots of talent. Sweater Beat, thank you guys very much for this. You guys rocked out tonight. It was awesome. Thank you so much. And, uh, and uh, I hope a lot of great things for you guys in the future. Awesome. Well, thanks for doing this, dude. Absolutely. Sweater Beat, check them out. Go stream Plum. It's on some streaming services.